HMS Prince of Wales was a King George V-class battleship of the Royal Navy, built at the Camel Lead Shipyard in Birkenhead, England. She was involved in several key actions of the Second World War, including the Battle of Denmark Strait against the German battleship Bismarck, operations escorting convoys in the Mediterranean, and her final action and sinking in the Pacific in 1941. Prince of Wales first encountered the Germans while being outfitted in her dry dock, being attacked and damaged by German aircraft. She was heavily involved in the first contact with the German battleship Bismarck and the cruiser Prinz Eugen, and landed three hits on Bismarck including two critical hits, one which caused extensive flooding forward, and another which exploded under Bismarck's armor belt causing machinery damage. The combined effect of both hits caused her to make the ill-fated decision to return to port. Prince of Wales suffered heavy damage during the engagement and had to return to Rosyth to be repaired. Prince of Wales transported Prime Minister Winston Churchill to the Newfoundland Conference with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. On October 25, 1941, Prince of Wales departed for Singapore to join Force said, a British naval detachment. She docked there on December 2 with the rest of the force, and at 2.11 on December 10 Force said was dispatched to investigate reports of Japanese landing forces at Kuantan. On arriving there they found the reports to be false. At 11 o'clock that morning Japanese bombers and torpedo aircraft began their assault on Force Zed. In a second attack at 11.31 torpedo struck Prince of Wales on the port side, wrecking the outer propeller shaft and causing the ship to take on a heavy list. A third torpedo attack developed against HMS Repulse, a renowned class battler cruiser in Force Zed, but she managed to avoid all torpedoes aimed at her. A fourth attack by torpedo carrying Type 1 Betty sank Repulse at 12.33. Six aircraft from this wave attacked Prince of Wales, with three of their torpedoes hitting the ship on the starboard side, causing flooding. Finally a 500 kg bomb hit the catapult deck, penetrated through to the main deck and exploded, tearing a gash in the port side of the hull. At 13.15 the order was given to abandon ship and at 13.20 Prince of Wales sank. Vice Admiral Tom Phillips and Captain John Leach were among the 327 fatalities. Prince of Wales and Repulse were the first capital ships to be sunk solely by air power on the open sea, a harbinger of the diminishing role this class of ships was subsequently to play in naval warfare. The wreck lies upside down in 223 feet of water, near Kuantan, in the South China Sea. Construction In the aftermath of the First World War, the Washington Naval Treaty was drawn up in 1922 in an effort to stop an arms race developing between Britain, Japan, France, Italy and the United States. This treaty limited the number of ships each nation was allowed to build and capped the tonnage of all capital ships at 35,000 tons. These restrictions were extended in 1930 through the Treaty of London, however, by the mid-1930s Japan and Italy had withdrawn from both of these treaties and the British became concerned about a lack of modern battleships within their navy. As a result, the Admiralty ordered the construction of a new battleship class, the King George V-class. Due to the provisions of both the Washington Naval Treaty and the Treaty of London, both of which were still in effect when the King George Versus were being designed, the main armament of the class was limited to the 14-inch guns prescribed under these instruments. They were the only battleships built at that time to adhere to the treaty and even though it soon became apparent to the British that the other signatories to the treaty were ignoring its requirements, it was too late to change the design of the class before they were laid down in 1937. Prince of Wales was originally named King Edward VIII but upon the abdication of Edward VIII the ship was renamed even before she had been laid down. This occurred at Camel Laird's shipyard in Birkenhead on January 1, 1937, although it was not until May 3, 1939 that she was launched. She was still fitting out when war was declared in September, causing her construction schedule, and that of her sister, King George V, to be accelerated. Nevertheless, the late delivery of gun mountings caused delays in her outfitting. During early August 1940, while she was still being outfitted and was in a semi-complete state, Prince of Wales was attacked by German aircraft. One bomb fell between the ship and a wet basin wall, 
narrowly missing a 100-ton dockside crane, and exploded underwater below the bilge keel. The explosion took place about six feet from the ship's port side in the vicinity of the aftergroup of 5.25-inch guns. Buckling of the shell plating took place over a distance of 20 to 30 feet, rivets were sprung and considerable flooding took place in the port outboard compartments in the area of damage, causing a 10-degree port list. The flooding was severe, due to the fact that final compartment air tests had not yet been made and the ship did not have her pumping system in operation. The water was pumped out through the joint efforts of a local fire company in the shipyard, and Prince of Wales was later dry docked for permanent repairs. This damage and the problem with the delivery of her main guns and turrets delayed her completion. As the war progressed there was an urgent need for capital ships, and so her completion was advanced by postponing compartment air tests, ventilation tests and a thorough testing of her bilge, ballast and fuel oil systems. Description Prince of Wales displaced 36,727 long tons is built and 43,786 long tons fully loaded. The ship had an overall length of 745 feet, a beam of 103 feet and a draft of 29 feet. Her designed metacentric height was 6 feet 1 inch at normal load and 8 feet 1 inch at deep load. She was powered by Parsons geared steam turbines, driving four propeller shafts. Steam was provided by eight Admiralty boilers which normally delivered 100,000 shaft horsepower, but could deliver 110,000 shp at emergency overload. This gave Prince of Wales a top speed of 28 knots. The ship carried 3,542 long tons of fuel oil. She also carried 180 long tons of diesel oil. 256 long tons of reserve feed water and 444 long tons of fresh water. During full power trials on March 31, 1941, Prince of Wales at 42,100 tons displacement achieved 28 knots with 111,600 shp at 228 rpms and a specific fuel consumption of 0.73 pounds per shp. Prince of Wales had a range of 3,100 nautical miles at 27 knots. Equals armament equals, Prince of Wales mounted 10 BL 14-inch MK7 guns. The 14-inch guns were mounted in one Mark II twin turret forward and two Mark III quadruple turrets, one forward and one aft. The guns could be elevated 40 degrees and depressed 3 degrees. Training arcs were, turret A, 286 degrees. Turret B, 270 degrees. Turret X, 270 degrees. Training and elevating was done by hydraulic drives, with rates of 2 and 8 degrees per second, respectively. A full gun broadside weighed 15,950 pounds, and a salvo could be fired every 40 seconds. The secondary armament consisted of 16 QF 5.25 inch MKI guns, which were mounted in eight twin mounts weighing 81 tons each. The maximum range of the MKI guns was 24,070 yards at a 45-degree elevation, the anti-aircraft ceiling was 49,000 feet. The guns could be elevated to 70 degrees and depressed to 5 degrees. The normal rate of fire was 10 to 12 rounds per minute, but in practice the guns could only fire 7 to 8 rounds per minute. Along with her main and secondary batteries Prince of Wales carried 32 QF-2 PDRMK Vipompom anti-aircraft guns. She also carried 80 UP projectors, which were short-range rocket-firing anti-aircraft weapons used extensively in the early days of the Second World War by the Royal Navy. Operational history equals Action with Bismarck equals. On May 22, 1941, Prince of Wales the battler cruiser Hood and six destroyers were ordered to take station south of Iceland and intercept the German battleship Bismarck if she attempted to break out into the Atlantic. Captain John Leach knew that main battery breakdowns were likely to occur, since Vickers Armstrong's technicians had already corrected some that took place during training exercises in Scarpa Flow. These technicians were personally requested by the captain to remain aboard. They did so and played an important role in the resulting action. The next day Bismarck, in company with a heavy cruiser Prinz Eugen, was reported heading southwestward in the Denmark Strait. 
at 20 o'clock Vice Admiral Lancelot Holland, in his flagship hood, ordered the force to steam at 27 knots, which it did most of the night. His battle plan called for Prince of Wales and Hood to concentrate on Bismarck, while the cruisers Norfolk and Suffolk would handle Prime's Eugen. However the two cruisers were not informed of this plan because of strict radio silence. At 2 o'clock, on May 24, the destroyers were sent as a screen to search for the German ships to the north and at 2.47 Hood and Prince of Wales increased speed to 28 knots and changed course slightly to obtain a better target angle on the German ships. The weather improved, with 10-mile visibility and crews were at action stations by 0510. At 5.37 an enemy contact report was made and course was changed to starboard to close range. Neither ship was in good fighting trim. Hood, designed 25 years earlier, lacked adequate horizontal protection and would have to close the range quickly, as she would become progressively less vulnerable to plunging shell fire at shorter ranges. She had completed an overhaul and marching her crew had not been adequately retrained. Prince of Wales, with thicker armor, was less vulnerable to 15-inch shells at ranges greater than 17,000 feet, but her crew had also not been trained to battle efficiency. The British ships made their last course change at 5.49, but they had made their approach too fine and their aft turrets could not fire. Prines Eugen with Bismarck astern had the Prince of Wales and Hood slightly forward of a beam and both ships could deliver full broadsides. At 5.53, despite seas breaking over the bows, Prince of Wales opened fire on Bismarck at 26,500 yards. There was some confusion among the British as to which ship was Bismarck and 30 seconds earlier Hood had mistakenly opened fire on Prine's Eugen as the German ships had similar profiles. Honoda Euro a Euro Sha Euro S first salvo straddled the enemy ship, but Prine's Eugen, in less than three minutes, scored eight inch shell hits on Hood. The first shots by Prince of Wales a Euro 2 3 gun salvos at 10 second intervals a Euro were 1,000 yards over. The turret range finders on Prince of Wales could not be used because of spray over the bow and fire was instead directed from the 15 foot range finders in the control tower. The six, 9th and 13th salvos were straddles and two decisive hits were made on Bismarck. One shell holed her bow and caused Bismarck to lose 1,000 tons of fuel oil, mostly to salt water contamination. The other fell short, and enter Bismarck below her side armor belt, the shell exploded and flooded the auxiliary boiler machinery room and forced the shutdown of two boilers due to a slow leak in the boiler room immediately aft. The loss of fuel and boiler power were decisive factors in the Bismarck a Euro a Euro Sha Euro S decision to return to port. In Prince of Wales, a one gun ceased fire after the first salvo due to a defect. Sporadic breakdowns occurred until the decision to turn away was made and during the turn Y turret jammed. Both German ships initially concentrated their fire on Hood and destroyed her with salvos of 8 and 15 inch shells. An 8-inch shell hit the boat deck and struck a ready service locker for the UP rocket projectors and a fire blazed high above the first superstructure deck. At 5.58 at a range of 16,500 yards, the force commander ordered a turn of 20 degrees to port to open the range and bring the full battery of the British ships to bear on Bismarck. As the turn began, Bismarck straddled Hood with her third and fourth full gun salvos and at 6.01 the fifth salvo hit her causing a large explosion. Flames shot up near Honoda Euro a Euro Sha Euro S masts, then an orange-colored fireball and an enormous smoke cloud obliterated the ship. On Prince of Wales, it seemed that her collapsed amidships and the bow and stern could be seen rising as she rapidly settled. Prince of Wales made a sharp starboard turn to avoid hitting the debris and in doing so further closed the range between her and the German ships. In the four-minute action, Hood the largest battler cruiser in the world, had been sunk. 1,419 officers and men were killed. Only three men survived. Prince of Wales fired unopposed until she began a port turn at 5.57, when Prine's Eugen took her under fire. After Hood exploded at 6.01, the Germans opened intense and accurate fire on Prince of Wales, with 15-inch, 8-inch and 5.9-inch guns. A heavy hit was sustained below the waterline as Prince of Wales maneuvered through the wreckage of Hood. At 6.02, 
a 15-inch shell struck the starboard side of the compass platform and killed the majority of the personnel there. The navigating officer was wounded, but Captain Leach was unhurt. Casualties were caused by the fragments from the shell's ballistic cap and the material it dislodged in its diagonal path through the compass platform. A 15-inch diving shell penetrated the ship's side below the armor belt amidships, failed to explode and came to rest in the wing compartments on the starboard side of the afterboiler rooms. The shell was discovered and defused when the ship was docked at Rosyth. At 6.05 Captain Leach decided to disengage and lay down a heavy smoke screen to cover Prince of Valencia Euro Euro Show Euro S escape. Following this, Leach radioed the Norfolk that the hood had been sunk and then proceeded to join the Norfolk roughly 15 to 17 miles astern of the Bismarck. Throughout the day the British ships continued to chase the Bismarck until at 18.16 when Suffolk sighted the Bismarck at 22,000 yards. Prince of Wales then proceeded to open fire on Bismarck at an extreme range of 30,300 yards. She fired 12 salvos but owing to the range all of them missed. At 1 o'clock on May 25 Prince of Wales once again regained contact and proceeded to open fire at a radar range of 20,000 yards. After observers believed that she had scored a hit on Bismarck, Prince of Wales's A turret temporarily jammed leaving her with only six operational guns. After losing the Bismarck owing to poor visibility and after searching for 12 hours Prince of Wales headed for Iceland and would take no further part in actions against the Bismarck. Equals Atlantic Charter Meeting equals. Following repairs at Rosyth, Prince of Wales transported Prime Minister Winston Churchill across the Atlantic for a secret conference with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. On August 5 Roosevelt boarded the cruiser USS Augusta from the presidential yacht Potomac. Augusta proceeded from Massachusetts to Placentia Bay and Argentia in Newfoundland in company with the cruiser USS Tuscaloosa and five destroyers, arriving on August 7 while the presidential yacht played a decoy role by continuing to cruise New England waters as if the president were still on board. On August 9 Winston Churchill arrived in the bay aboard Prince of Wales, escorted by the destroyers HMS Ripley, HMCS Assiniboine and HMCS Restigouche. At Placentia Bay, Newfoundland, Roosevelt transferred to the destroyer USS MacDougall to meet Winston Churchill on board Prince of Wales. The conference continued from 10 to August 12 aboard the heavy cruiser USS Augusta, and at the end of the conference, the Atlantic Charter was proclaimed. Following the declaration of the Charter Prince of Wales arrived back at Scarpa Flow on August 18. Equals Mediterranean duty equals in September following the meeting with President Roosevelt Prince of Wales was assigned to Force H, in the Mediterranean. On September 24 Prince of Wales formed part of Group 2, led by Vice Admiral Alban Curtis and consisting of the battleships Prince of Wales and Rodney, the cruisers Kenya, Edinburgh, Sheffield and Aurelis and 12 destroyers. The force provided an escort for Operation Halberd, a supply convoy from Gibraltar to Malta. On September 27 the convoy was attacked by Italian aircraft, with Prince of Wales shooting down several with her 5.25-inch guns. Later that day there were reports that units of the Italian fleet were approaching. Prince of Wales, the battleship Rodney and the aircraft carrier Ark Royal were dispatched to intercept, but the search proved fruitless. The convoy arrived in Malta without further incident and Prince of Wales returned to Gibraltar, before sailing on to Scarpa Flow, arriving there on October 6. Equals Far East equals. On October 25 Prince of Wales and a destroyer escort left home waters bound for Singapore, there to rendezvous with the battlecruiser Repulse and the aircraft carrier Indomitable. Indomitable however ran aground off Jamaica a few days later and was unable to proceed. Calling at Freetown and Cape Town South Africa to refuel and generate publicity. Prince of Wales also stopped in Mauritius and the Maldive Islands. Prince of Wales reached Colombo, Ceylon, on November 28, joining Repulse the next day. On December 2 the fleet docked in Singapore. Prince of Wales then became the flagship of Force Z, under the command of Vice Admiral Sir Tom Phillips. Japanese troop convoys were sighted on December 6 a Euro nearly two days prior to the Pearl Harbor attack. Pearl Harbor being east of the date line a Euro, 
and Singapore was raided by Japanese aircraft. In response Prince of Valencia Euro 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 S anti-aircraft batteries opened fire but scored no hits and had no effect on the Japanese aircraft. A signal was received from the Admiralty in London ordering the British squadron to commence hostilities in that evening, confident that a protective air umbrella would be provided by the RAF presence in the region, Admiral Phillips set sail. Four said at this time comprised the battleship Prince of Wales, the battler cruiser Repulse, and the destroyers Electra, Express, Tenedos and HMAS Vampire. The object of the sortie was to attack Japanese transports at Kota Peru, but in the afternoon of December 9 the Japanese submarine I-56 spotted the British ships and in the evening they were detected by Japanese aerial reconnaissance. By this time it had been made clear that no RAF fighter support would be forthcoming. At midnight a signal was received that Japanese forces were landing at Kuantan in Malaya. Force Ed was diverted to investigate. At 2.11 on December 10 the force was again sighted by a Japanese submarine and at 8 o'clock arrived off Kuantan, only to discover that the reported landings were a diversion. At 11 o'clock that morning the first Japanese air attack began. Eight Type 96 Nell bombers dropped their bombs close to Repulse one passing through the hangar roof and exploding on the one-inch plating of the main deck below. The second attack force, comprising 17 Nels armed with torpedoes, arrived at 11.30, divided into two attack formations. Despite some reports to the contrary Prince of Wales was struck by only one torpedo, although this was to eventually prove fatal, while Repulse managed to avoid the seven torpedoes aimed at her as well as bombs dropped minutes later by a further formation of six nails. The torpedo struck Prince of Wales on the port side aft, abaft Y turret, wrecking the outer propeller shaft on that side and destroying bulkheads to one degree or another along the shaft all the way to the engine room, which in turn caused rapid uncontrollable flooding and put the entire electrical system in the after part of the ship out of action. Lacking effective damage control, she immediately took on a heavy list. A third torpedo attack developed against Repulse and once again she succeeded in avoiding any hits, but she was hit several times by a fourth attack from torpedo carrying Type 1 Betis, and sank at 12.33. Six aircraft from this wave then attack Prince of Wales, hitting her with three torpedoes, causing further damage and flooding. Finally, a 500 kg bomb hit the catapult deck, penetrated through to the main deck and exploded there causing many casualties in the makeshift aid center in the cinema flat. Several other bombs from this attack were very near misses, indenting the hull, popping rivets and causing hull plates to split along the seams and intensifying the flooding. At 13.15 the order to abandon ship was given and at 13.20 Prince of Wales capsized and sank. Vice Admiral Phillips and Captain Leach were among the 327 fatalities. Equals aftermath equals. Prince of Wales and Repulse were the first capital ships to be sunk solely by naval air power on the open sea, a harbinger of the diminishing role this class of ships was to play in naval warfare thereafter. It is often pointed out, however, that a contributing factor to the sinking of Prince of Wales was her surface scanning radar being inoperable, depriving force said of one of its most potent early warning devices and the early critical damage she sustained from the first torpedo. Another factor which led to Prince of Valencia Euro Euro Show Euro S demise was the additional loss of dynamos depriving Prince of Wales of many of her pumps. Further electrical failures left parts of the ship in total darkness and added to the difficulties of her damage repair parties as they attempted to counter the flooding. The sinking was the subject of an inquiry chaired by Mr. Justice Bucknell, but the true causes of the ship's loss were only established when divers examined the wreck after the war. The Director of Naval Construction's report on the sinking claimed that the ship's anti-aircraft guns could have inflicted heavy casualties before torpedoes were dropped, if not preventing the successful conclusion of attack had crews been more adequately trained in their operation. Equals the wreck equals, the wreck lies upside down in 223 feet of water at 3 a degree 33 a euro squared 36 a euro cubed n 104 a degree 28 a euro squared 42 a euro cubed ea royal navy white ensign attached to a line on a buoy tied to a propeller shaft is periodically renewed 
The wreck site was designated a protected place in 2001 under the Protection of Military Remains Act 1986, just prior to the 60th anniversary of her sinking. The ship's bell was manually raised in 2002 by British technical divers with the permission of the Ministry of Defence and blessing of the Four Set Survivors Association. It was restored, then presented for permanent display by First Sea Lord and Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral Sir Alan West, to the Merseyside Maritime Museum in Liverpool. It is currently traditional for every passing Royal Navy ship to perform a remembrance service over the side of the wrecks. In May 2007, Expedition Job 74 Feet, a dedicated survey of the exterior hull of both Prince of Wales and Repulse, was conducted. The expedition's findings sparked considerable interest among naval architects and marine engineers around the world. As they detailed the nature of the damage to Prince of Wales and the exact location in number of torpedo hits. Consequently, the findings contained in the initial expedition report and later supplementary reports were analyzed by the SNAME Marine Forensics Committee and a resultant paper was drawn up entitled Death of a Battleship, a Reanalysis of the Tragic Loss of HMS Prince of Wales. This paper was subsequently presented at a meeting of RINA and MRE-ST members in London by Mr. William Garsk. In October 2014, the Daily Telegraph reported that both Prince of Wales and Repulse were being extensively damaged with explosives by scrap metal dealers. Refits During her career, Prince of Wales was refitted on several occasions, to bring her equipment up to date. The following are the dates and details of the refits undertaken. References, Notes, Citations, External Links, List of Crew, Newsreel Footage of Operation Halberd, as filmed from Prince of Wales, Photos of Prince of Wales at Maritime Quest.